But man, there was a big, big, big time trade that the Mavs just executed with the Houston uh, Rockets. And I know I'm excited about it. I can't wait to talk to you about it, DDP, because it looks like the Mavericks are finally getting the Luka train, some inside help and athletic. Talk to us about it as we jump right into this major trade for the Dallas Mavericks. Man, it's pretty crazy anytime. Like, we were just setting up to do a regular positively relentless, and we're still going to touch on that stuff uh, that you were just talking about. But yeah, definitely your your interest perks up a little bit when you see your team making this kind of move because this is a substantial trade. And when you look at what Dallas gave up in it, it it's kind of remarkable, really. The worst thing you gave up was the emotional connection for Bobon. I love Bobon, but he just doesn't fit into the the team's plans and framework going forward you know you couldn't play him at all in the playoffs so you do that and pick 26 to get a guy that's 26 years old averaged basically like 18 and 10 last season and shot 39 percent from three that that's absurd that is absurd value and that is you know if we want to call this the first real signature move from nico harrison like that's a very fair statement This is the first like substantial personnel move they've made. I mean, I guess you could say the KP trade just coming in and kind of being honest with that from the jump. But man, I love this. I love this move for Dallas, especially considering the worst thing you gave up again. Bobon in 26, uh, Burke and Sterling, Sterling Moore or sorry, Sterling Brown, um, who fell out of your rotation so fast last year. So it makes total sense for Dallas. This, This is a great move. Great move. I'm super excited, man, because, you know, I've been screaming for that big man for the last few years. I'm sure a lot of other people have. And, you know, the Mavericks were looking, you know, draft maybe all season. But we saw what happened in these playoffs and we were excited. We we're excited about what, what Dallas had did. Western Conference Finals, you're feeling good. So I think we we're all sitting back and seeing what's going to happen, you know, after the, you know, great year with Jason Kidd and things of that nature. Are we going to take it to the next level? And right here, I like the thing I like about this DDP is that we just talked about how you just come off this surprising Western Conference Finals, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't think Mavericks were getting there, but not only you get there, right after it, you execute a trade like this, who you're, like we just talked about, you're getting a guy who's a double-double last year, 38% from three-point range, 50% field goal uh, from two-point range, um, athletic, that's what I was loving. A double double guy. I've been screaming, get us a di- athletic double double. And boom, you get a guy who's 26 years old. And that just to me shows Dallas is being serious. They're not resting on the laurels. They're not resting on what just happened in these Western Conference finals. They're saying, let's take it to the next level. We got a taste of it. Now let's go get more. And we only gave up our 26 pick who you knew nothing about. You didn't know what you were getting. Yes, we heard about Boban, but we saw, like you said, he fell out the rotation. It Mm -hmm. just wasn't that perfect marriage for the the Dallas Mavericks. This is something that can really pop. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen even more after this. Yeah, I mean, he brings an athleticism to the front court. They've just simply lacked a guy that can take it hard to the hole, a guy that can the athletic alley-oops around the basket. You know, he he, wor- he worked well initially with Harden and then the last couple of years, you know, they haven't had him, obviously, but he's been able to kind of shine in really rough going for he They've been rebuilding and just trying to acquire a bunch of picks. The fact that they're so fu- I mean, it makes sense that they wouldn't that they would move him in a trade, but I'm shocked that they feel like this is the best deal they could get for him. Because right. I, I think. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of question about like him having some injury stuff here and there, but like, I I don't think this is by any means the best deal they could have gotten for him. So, if you want to give credit for Nico Harrison here finding a way to finesse this kind of deal, this is this is on paper a massive, massive, and it's it's a weapon Dallas hasn't really had in terms of like the athleticism and ability to to finish around the rim. It kind of gives me a little bit of like a, a Brandon Wright vibe mm-hmm. now. He Brandon Wright couldn't shoot threes or extend the floor like that, but just someone who could complete these kind of alley oop and everything around the basket, just bring that extra dimension to your game. The fact that Dwight Powell has been your best lob threat for like four right. years, five years, right. whatever, kind of says everything about this team. Where it's like, yeah, it can be a decent, a decent option, but when it's got to be like your best feature for that, then it's not going to be good enough. This is a huge upgrade at a major point of position. Um, and it totally out of nowhere. I I expected, honestly, 
something to happen draft night. I didn't expect this. The fact that it's like 15 minutes before we were going to record this anyway, we're like, ah, you know what? Mm. Let's go live. Let's go live. Like right, we we're right. going to go live on your channel, but like, well, we're, we're leading with the heavy, heavy Mavericks thing. So I guess we'll roll on prospect. Exactly. Exactly. And then like, you would, you know, just listen to the chat, shout out to everybody in the chat. We're, we're really going hard out here, but you know, the thing that I'm looking at, you know, now you still got pal, Dwight Powell, and now he can come off the bench for you. Now you don't have to sit there and worry about him being that starter for you and getting uh, two points, three rebounds, and playing all these daggone minutes and not being effective for you. Now he can go into a spot where it could be more comfortable for him. So as I said before, man, I'm excited. We Like you just said, we were just sitting down. We were, getting, we were talking over a little bit of topics, how this is going to do, and then this thing comes out of nowhere. Um, it, huge. Uh, I hear lists of people chatting. Nico finessed him. He showed did i love how you did it nico please do some more finesse and finesse some more people for finesse some more people please so we can get maybe another guy in here man i'm i'm excited man uh you know just just i'm excited ddp that's all i can say i'm excited because i've been waiting for this yeah and you know what um not to pat myself too hard on the back here but when when we go did ahead back yourself first- we did Go one of our first yourself. episodes and I was talking about like off season options. The Mavericks had, one I think you, mi- yep, you mentioned them specifically yep. was trade options. I listed mm-hmm. Christian Wood and said that I thought that was a pretty strong possibility. Now mm-hmm. I-, I know that we kind of started shifting our focus towards like miles Turner as a possibility, but, and this is a, uh, this is really good. And especially when you consider like Turner might be better when healthy, but like when you're considering what you're, what you're actually giving up here, the value mm-hmm. you're getting him for is just on right mm-hmm. like it's uh it's not even a question that's the move if you have both even in the realm of possibility this is the one that makes the most sense this is a this is a huge slam dunk and uh, i feel a little bit like i called it maybe not called it but i certainly was like hey this is one to, that would be a, a serious upgrade and would be intriguing and possible yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give yourself props. So ain't no wrong with saying you called it. If you called it, go ahead and give yourself props. You know what I mean? Because yep. I like it. Now, going from there, now you got rid of your uh, 26 pick. Mm-hmm. You know about Boban. Now Christian Woods in the fold. We got Jalen Brunson. We They've already talked about what they're going to do with him. Do you still, still think DDP that they should go out and get uh, uh, somebody else? Or are you feel like the Mavs will be done right here? Um, or do you think we should add one more piece who they consider like another big two or big three type player? Because Christian Wood is not going to be that. No, but uh, at this point, it's still got the Brunson deal that they're going to look to do. Right. Um, Brandon, it, it's basically they're finalizing the deal. Woj and Shams have both commented on it and said that it's being finalized. It's, it's not official official, but it's essentially. It. Um. Now, in the case here, you have Wood is under contract at fourteen point three million this upcoming season, and then he's mm-hmm. an unrestricted free agent. That's going to be this is his age twenty seven season. Then he'll be twenty eight as a free agent. So my guess is you're going to probably look to try and keep Brunson. We we've talked a little bit about what we think he'll get. I think that's essentially going to be it for the big swing. I know mm-hmm. there's been some talk about like possibilities and potential scenarios wherein the Mavericks kind of scoff or blink at Brunson's price tag. I don't I know that's technically a possibility, but like I, I think any things that have talked about like sign and trade options, like the Knicks trying to get in on Brunson because they're really high on him. Um mm-hmm. I just I don't see that happening. I think Brunson stays home and I think you're running with this sort of Maybe not big three. I don't know if you'd say that. Like, I, I don't view it certainly as a traditional big three, considering we've been calling Brunson a, a true number two option for all of four months, it feels. But uh, it, nevertheless, it's a lethal, potent offense pack. And I think that's all you really need. You don't have to have, have superstars flanking Luka. You just need guys that fit well and can you know, be dynamic. And Christian Wood fits that clean bill of health. He fits that bill. And Jalen Brunson is shifty as all get out. He can get his own bucket. He can take some of that pressure off of Luka and create a little bit. That's it. Then you add in the fact that you're going to have Spencer Dinwiddie potentially. Now, again, Brunson's new deal might make that not the case. But if you do, (laughs) you got three guys that can create and you got a guy like Christian Wood who can be spoon-fed by three different guys. That's Mm -hmm. 
That's money. 